Hey there and welcome to my channel. Today is a super long video. We're going to be doing a meal planning with me, a decorate with me, a cook with me, all your favorite things. So I decided to keep the intro super short. So we're going to jump right into the day. If you're new to my channel, my name is Lauren Nicholson and I love to do all things homemaking, cooking, cleaning, and decorating. And I would be honored if you would pause this video right now and hit the subscribe button. If you're returning, it is so great to see you. So I got a ton of comments in my last couple of videos on exactly how I do my meal prep. So I am going to show you how I do that. I pretty much always have have my weekly meal planners and my weekly grocery list printed and in my day timer. I will link them down below. They're totally free. They're on my website. You can download them and print them each week if you want to use this method. I really love to find inspiration for my recipes in a couple different cookbooks. This happens to be one of my favorite. It's called Taste and Technique. I'll link it down below as well. You can also get it on Amazon, but it has great recipes. I also sometimes use Pinterest, but I feel like on Pinterest, tell me in the comments down below if you feel this way, but I feel like all the recipes are the same. Like if I do, you know, dinner recipes, healthy chicken dishes, it's like eight of the same regurgitated you like different recipes. So I really do like to use things from cookbooks. I just find that it's a little bit more fun and authentic, a slower way of finding recipes. But then I always do a twist on most recipes. If I do have a recipe that I cook on my channel that I just completely use from a different website, I will always link their recipe. But if I tweak it, I do like to put it up on my website. So I will link those down below. So for this week, I want to list out everything I have for the kids that they need for lunch. This is our last week before back to school. So typically I won't need to do it this uh, in depth. And then I'm going to go through and actually list out what we're going to be cooking for the week. And then from there, I will take all of this and start to build my grocery list. And then I will either go grocery shopping or put an order in just depending on how busy my day is. The weekly grocery list, I usually kind of block out between, you know, dairy, uh, fr like frozen things, um, vegetables, fruits, and proteins. So I will get all of this done and I will show you guys exactly how it turns out. Sorry in advance for my child handwriting. I am a horrible, I have horrible handwriting. Okay guys, so here is how the weekly meal plan is looking for this week. We are going to have pizza for lunch. We're gonna do grilled cheese, chicken nuggets. I've got pasta and fruit and then burgers. We're gonna go out on Saturday with the kids. But on Monday, we're gonna do a honey glazed salmon with broccoli and avocado in a bowl with some rice underneath. Um, for Tuesday, we'll do buttermilk, buttermilk fried chicken, collard greens, and mac and cheese. Um, these are all, most of these are my own recipes. Some of these I've done before, some of them I haven't. Then we're gonna do a short rib with um, some mashed potatoes and roasted carrots. Um, I like to put like a little bit of um, thyme and some either maple syrup or butter on top of those. I'll share that recipe with you guys. And then Spanish style stuffed bell peppers. So with this, we're gonna actually boil our chicken, use the shredded chicken inside of here. We're gonna use the broth from this chicken, this shredded chicken, and we're going to use that um, chicken broth for the bri smoked brisket chili, which I've also done on my channel. Friday, I'll just do a lasagna. You know, it's a long day, long week, so I like to do something simple on Fridays. And basically what I do from there is I create a list of everything we're gonna need, starting with my proteins, going into vegetables, and then other little things we're gonna need. Half of this stuff I have to execute this. So um, like the brisket, I've got the cornbread already. I have corn already. And I don't need any chicken broth because I'm gonna make it myself. And that just kind of makes the meal plan a little bit easier. So I will grab all of this stuff and then we will come back together and I will prep it for the week, wash it, get it put and restocked back into the refrigerator. I always um, like to actually order this stuff to be delivered. It just helps so I don't have to take four kids to the grocery store. So when that stuff, while we're waiting for that stuff to arrive, I'm actually going to Come over here and we will clean all of these. These are the little drawers that go into the refrigerator bins. We'll clean these, let them dry, and then I have a fun activity for the kids. Do you miss me at all? Do you think about the things we used to do? No, you couldn't stand tall. So why didn't you, why didn't you call? So many years has gone by But I think about you, about you all the time Okay, so here is the list of everything we are going to be cooking this week. Want to say hi, Wooch? 
Hi, he's on his lunch break. So cute. Okay, so here's everything we picked up for dinner this week. It's kind of nice to see everything laid out and I'm gonna go through and kind of show you guys really quickly what we have going on here. So as far as dinner's concerned, I've got the broccoli over here and the avocados and salmon. We're gonna put all of that in one dish. Then we're gonna be doing buttermilk uh, fried chicken with some collard greens. I absolutely love collard greens. And then doing a little macaroni and cheese. I'm gonna be doing macaroni with sharp cheddar. I'm gonna share that recipe with you guys as well. I also use buttermilk when I make my fried chicken. So I have a little bit of that. Then we're gonna be making short ribs this week. I love short ribs. It's supposed to get kind of cold here, so I definitely wanted to do that with some potatoes. And then I grabbed some carrots for roasting. I'm also gonna use these carrots and this celery to actually boil this chicken so I can make chicken stock and also shredded chicken. So we're gonna use the shredded chicken for our Spanish style stuffed peppers. I have our peppers here and I have the other ingredients I need for that recipe already in a stock pile. I did get some traditional Cajun spice, some blackening spice, and some more smoked paprika because I'm gonna use a little mix of those in some of my dishes this week. So I have those. Once I'm done boiling that and putting it in the stuffed peppers, we're actually gonna use that broth to make our smoked brisket chili. Um, when it comes to the smoked brisket, I actually get that from a local um, uh, barbecue pit here so that just makes it a little bit easier and then I'm going to do a lasagna one of the days um, I am going to be making a like autumn harvest bowl so I'm going to be doing some kale with that some asparagus and some of these gorgeous Asian pears they're my favorites probably a little bit of roasted organic yam and um, I also got bacon. I'm gonna be putting the bacon with the collard greens. You should probably do like ham hocks or like a ham to go with these, but I like this maple bourbon bacon. It's my favorite, so we're gonna be doing that. And what I'm gonna do right now is show you how I prep everything for the week. That way each day when I get home from work, I can just grab the box that corresponds with the dish and all the things are ready and prepped. I went ahead and got all of these dry and ready to go. I do this each week, so all we do is we just kind of put these out. This is for fresh produce, and then these are for our meals. So we will have four of these. have the meals here like that so for these we'll put like the what do we have steaks chicken salmon so we have everything ready to go here I'm gonna be sharing the fried chicken recipe with you guys today and then I have my strainers ready to go. That way things could be soaking while I'm chopping things up and getting them put away. I will link all of this down below. I get a lot of questions about them, so definitely please check the links below because I will put all of this there for you. But let's go ahead and get started prepping everything for this week's dinners. No, well why didn't you, why didn't you call? So after I clean all these bins, I like to line them with just a little bit of, a, you can use either a rag. I like to use something that I can throw away. So I put in a little bit of a paper towel just to kind of line it and keep everything fresh. I'm gonna go ahead and clean all of our vegetables. It's about 3.30 in the afternoon. I finished the kids' uh, projects for the day. I waited, we did that while I was waiting for the groceries to arrive. So that was fun for us to do that. And then now I'm just going to prep everything and clean it. I've shared this a little bit in my past videos, but I really like to have a nice clean system. I will show you in a little bit. So definitely stick around.
down to see how I actually lay out our refrigerator. So every single day, all I have to do is pull out the recipe I'm using, the corresponding like little basket, whether it's chicken or steak or salmon, and then the vegetables needed for that recipe as well. That way I'm never scrambling or when I used to try to, you know, come home, look in the refrigerator, try to figure out what to cook. And then I go in and be like, oh, for this recipe, I need this. I don't have that. Now everything is done. And I usually buy five days in advance. Anything after that, sometimes things tend to go bad. So I purchase things for five recipes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, typically. Saturday, Sunday, I try to keep things loose because we go and do fun things with the kids and try to be um, not as, maybe a little more fluid on what we're going to eat. But I'm going to go ahead and clean everything and then get it chopped up, put into the refrigerator, and then we will start cooking dinner. Before we do that, I'm going to share a little tablescape I did, and I thought you guys would just enjoy a quick decorate with me as well. So for tonight's recipe, I'm going to be doing one of my favorite recipes. It's going to be some collard greens with some bacon. So I'm just going to get that washed and set aside and prepped. We're also going to be doing some um, macaroni and cheese, one of my other favorite recipes, and some fried chicken. So stick around to the end of this video if you want to see that. So now that we have everything washed and prepped, I've got everything in the bins where they need to go. We're gonna actually slide all of these into the refrigerator. I've got my salmon, chicken, everything we need. And what I like to do is actually put the items that kids probably won't grab. So like the kids like broccoli, tomatoes, things like that. I'll usually sometimes put those at the bottom and then things I'm going to cook like the um, asparagus and stuff like that at the top, but it really doesn't matter how you organize it. You could even organize it by day. So I'm going to just slide everything in where it needs to go. And then at the very bottom of the refrigerator is where I will add the um, actual proteins of the dishes we'll be making. This helps me. So every day I need to cook. We'll do that in a minute. I'll show you exactly how I do it. I just get the recipe. I come in here, I pull the drawers out I need, and then I set them in the kitchen and I start cooking. This really helps me keep everything organized and makes cooking and dinner time and lunch time breakfast super easy and stress-free. Okay guys, so it is time to start cooking. The kids are off playing downstairs. I've got my collard greens all cleaned. Are these not the most beautiful leaves? I absolutely love collard greens. They can be bitter, but when you cook them with like some fat or some butter, you should really cook these with like 
a nice bacon or pork fat. They are so good. So I'm gonna be sharing one of my favorite recipes for collard greens today. And then I've got our chicken ready to go. We're gonna be doing some fried chicken. So I have some um, thighs and some drumsticks, but I like with the skin on because it gets real crunchy. And then over here, I've got everything I think I'm gonna need, probably gonna need more. I like to do the maple bourbon um, bacon. We're gonna be adding that to our collard greens. We're also gonna be using some of the fat from this for the collard greens. Chicken stock, um, I'm gonna need some either, well you can use either hot sauce or vinegar. I'm gonna use vinegar, but then I put a little bit of hot sauce for my husband and I, but the kids like it without the hot sauce. And then I'm gonna be making some homemade macaroni and cheese. So I just have some elbow noodles. I really like to use panko on the top, but I didn't have enough, so I might need to use a little bit of breadcrumb and some smoked paprika, a little sharp cheddar. Then I'm also gonna get the half and half out for that. You can use um, milk and um, you could either use uh, heavy whipping cream or milk and half and half, which is what I like. I don't, the heavy whipping cream is too heavy for the kids. And then I've got some buttermilk, some flour, for our fried chicken. I'm gonna do the fried chicken in a cast iron skillet with a ton of butter. Um, I've made it this way for a million years. <laughs> I think you guys are gonna love it. And then um, we will just kind of see how everything else turns out. This is like one of my favorite all time comfort foods and I can't wait to show you how it turns out. So as you guys can tell, today is obviously Monday. Um, so obviously we are not on Tuesday and I'm making this dish. So the other thing you can do, which I will show you. So let's say you already cooked this and it's Monday or another day. All you have to do is just, you can just check it off like that or even just put a strike through it. I don't like to strike through it. I like to keep what I've made in the past. I stayed on my plan last week and uh, behind it, I actually kept the recipes I ended up really liking. Um, I didn't do the autumn salad. I did something different, but um, um, the other recipes that I really liked are in there. So I like to compile recipes and eventually I put them into a little folder that holds all the recipes I like to cook during the year. And then I have a bunch of notes on the side on how I like to change it. Um, but I'll tell you guys a little bit more about how I do some recipe hunting and um, just all kinds of fun stuff, but let's get cooking. Time to borrow today. Well, something's gotta give today. So the first thing I always like to do, and you could probably do this in the morning if you wanted to, but I like to do it about an hour or two before I actually make our fried chicken, is just let it soak in some buttermilk and set it aside. To get started, I wanna actually make our macaroni and cheese because we're gonna bake that in the oven after it's done. Then we will get going on our collard greens. They're super easy to make and then we'll fry up our chicken. The way I do my fried chicken is really simple and I will show you step by step. It's a good day to While the macaroni is boiling in a pot next to this, I am going to just frazzle up some chopped up bacon and then I am going to get our collard greens ready. I like to actually take the spine out of the middle of the collard greens. Again, I feel like it, it introduces a little bit of a bitter flavor. So all I do is just chop it right out and then I will stack all my collard greens up and chop them up into little one each inch pieces. You could really do this any way you'd like. This is just typically how I do it, get it ready. And then we are gonna actually cook that on the stove. Once your bacon is pretty cooked, go ahead and remove it. We're going to actually be saving that bacon fat and adding it back into our delicious collard greens. You definitely don't have to do that step, but I always like to add a little bit back in. The flavor is awesome. So to cook our collard greens, instead of using olive oil, I'm going to use a little bit of bacon fat. I'm going to add some yellow onions in there and stew those down for a little bit. Then I'm going to be introducing our collard greens and some garlic and let that simmer on a very low heat. I like to also add a little bit of some chicken stock 
That way it cooks down with some delicious flavors. So while the collard greens are stewing down, we're going to get our macaroni and cheese going. I just get a regular old, you know, elbow pasta, but you can really do this with any type. I'm going to melt down one stick of butter and then I'm slowly going to fold in some flour. I like to use the flour and then slowly just whisk it together. And then once they're kind of combined and most of the lumps are out, we're going to start adding in our cheese and some milk. The great thing about the milk is it if sometimes when you do a bechamel sauce like this, it can get really thick. And what we want is to have that really creamy cheese um, consistency. So the milk will help cut that down. You can also use a half and half as well. But when the milk actually incorporates with the um, butter and the flour, it just melts all together. Once you add your cheese, that's what gives it that great bechamel flavor. When you add your cheese, I'm using a sharp white cheddar. It happens to be my favorite, but Gruyere is also really delicious in this dish. Go ahead and add the cheese slowly and mix it in. If you feel like it's getting too thick like mine is, just continue to keep adding milk or half and half, and you'll see that it all kind of combines, and it will make the cheese a lot, le a lot easier to work with. I always like to add the macaroni into the pot before I actually put it into a Pyrex, and I will bake that for about 20 minutes. For the next step, you could either just throw this right into the oven and not worry about it. I would highly recommend putting some foil on top, spray the foil with some oil, that way it doesn't stick to your mac and cheese. But I always like to add a nice um, panko or breadcrumb crust to the top. To do that, just add a little bit of oil to a cast iron skillet and then just keep sifting the panko until it's nice and golden brown, then add it to the top. I like to do this, it just makes the mac and cheese so crunchy and delicious and I love the flavor on top. So if you wanna try that, definitely do that before you pop it in the oven. If you are gonna add this, you do you don't need to add um, the foil to the top because it will actually make the moisture from the mac and cheese it'll make the breadcrumbs a little bit soggy so you don't want to do that so to get started with our fried chicken I'm just going to be adding flour some garlic salt and a little bit of baking powder to a bowl and we're going to be taking a cast iron skillet I'm going to throw one big giant stick of butter in there we're going to probably use a little bit more because the butter does get absorbed into this wonderful um, kind of flour breading that goes on here so basically how I like to do this is I have the chicken sitting in the buttermilk I'm going to take the chicken dunk it into the flour and then I am going to put it skin side down into the skillet with the butter in it. Once I have all of it packed in here, I'm going to throw it into the oven, which is already preset to 350 and I'm going to let that cook down. I like to do this after I bread the first side. We're going to flip that over then we'll put it into the oven and let it finish in there. That way ensure that the chicken is fully cooked. Go ahead and do that. I have a couple cast iron skillets, so I'm gonna be doing two of these, but once they're done, pull them right out of the oven and we'll get those on the table. While that's cooking, we've got our macaroni and cheese cooking and I've got our collard greens simmering in my Dutch oven. We're almost ready to get dinner on the table. I cannot wait to show you how it all turns out. For dinner, I'm just gonna add the collard greens and a little bit of the juice from it into a bowl so it doesn't get all over the plate. I've got my mac and cheese and my crispy, extra crunchy fried chicken. And here is how everything turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you guys in the next video really soon. Do not forget to subscribe because there is so much more coming up on my channel. Okay guys, I'll see you really soon. Bye. It's a good